Welcome to I Love Stocks, and I hope you had a great trading week last week. First, I want to talk about, well, let's get right into the YouTube channel right here. Please subscribe, ring that bell for future updates, and hit that like button for, we really do appreciate it. We're going to go straight to the coronavirus itself. We had 102,469 confirmed cases, a death rate. Rest in peace of 3,491 with a total recovery rate of 57,444. I take this with a little grain of salt, but it is something that I can refer to. Um, and I like to see the count on this when I first get in the morning. kind of tells me maybe how I want to play some of these coronavirus plays. So we're going to go straight to the website. That link will be uh, down below. So if you want to go ahead and take it, you can go ahead and, and copy that and save that link. Well, this is a SPX website. As you can see, I always go to the investors part and kind of read up updates or any nice kind of news releases or check out the SEC filings or any kind of stock information. But this is always some place where I like to go. And I've noticed right off the bat when I put it on the watch list, that the volume started picking up real fast and I noticed that the float rotation was kind of low. I never like to use the think or swim uh, reference for a float rotation. So I'll always go straight to Finviz and type in Finviz right here. I'll type in the ticker that I want to watch and that's going to be SPEX and it brings me straight to this part right here where it's, where it's float rotation. And that's 2.86, so that float was real low. Anything under $5 million to me is going to have a lot of low float people watching the stock. And there's many traders that only trade that low float. And that's it because of the volatility that pertains with a low float stock. And the news that came out, and, and I always like to go to Wahoo Finance to look for the news that comes out besides what I read up on, on Meritrade on thinkorswim. I have different platforms that I trade off of. I have two Ameritrade platforms. I have I have a U stock trade platform and I have a Tastyworks platform. So I'm and I've got them set up in different ways that I like to trade them. But I think I used about every platform I could on this but my my uh, options platform. I just scalped it. I scalped it three times and I wish I'd kind of held it straight through. But you never know how these things go. But once that rotation started to kick in, I knew it was time to hold. And many uh, members in the room did hold. Vegas, we have uh, oh um, a couple other members that are in the room too. Longhorn, and then we have a new member in here that I can't remember his name right off the bat. But he was all over it, and we were just watching it. So let's go ahead and go straight to part of the news. Uh, SPX stocks runs soars after the option executed for technology and patent for the method to treat coronavirus infection. So that was a big catalyst for this stock to go ahead and run. It did have a, a break of 130% into close and then ran more after close. The next catalyst on this stock was it, it's, it is going to have a name change. I wanted to bring that up to everybody on March 13th. The ticker's new ticker name will be AIKI, and so jot that down on paper. Just always in the back of your head, remember on the 13th that it will have a name change. Also, another catalyst for this stock to run is that it did close a public offering of 7.5 million that came out on the third and closed on the fifth at a dollar five. So once it hit that dollar five target, it was down at around 70 something, six I don't know, 65 cents. It went ahead and had that breakout after 105. And I've scalped it three different times in my major account. I scalped it in my uh, my other side account and also scalped it twice in my in my in my small account that I have. I mean I'm really got a real small account that I'm trying to trying to boost up. So let's go straight into the uh, trade itself. Pull up the chart. We did have pull up the yearly chart on it. You can see where we had the yearly high of 425 with a resistance right around the 403 area. Need to change that. 
I'll go straight up here to right around the 403. There it is. 404. And you notice it did kind of curl up and then it's pulled back ever since for almost the whole year. And then we had that big breakout right here and it ran up to about. So this is going to be a little resistance that we're going to target it to at 368. We do have another resistance here at 306. There's another one right here on the yearly chart at 343. So I'm just kind of drawing these trend lines in because I know these are going to be places of reference to, that maybe have will have a hard resistance. Let's go ahead and pull up the five one minute five day. Let's pull up the five day. Let me see here. Five day, five minute. And I can magnify this up. Right out of the gate, the news came out. I had a target for one buck on it. We did hit that one buck target, and then it pulled back, and then I started calling support levels. And I said, if this thing pulls back to 87 cents, that could be your first support. And then I had a low support at 78. We never was never able to make it to that 78, but I jumped in it at right at 87 cents, took it all the way to a dollar, sold it. Then it started to pull back, and I got back in it at 93 cents, and I sold it at my next target, and that was right up here, right around the 118 area is where I found resistance. Well, she pulled back a little bit, and then she had that big breakout all the way up to 171. This is on a five-minute chart. So it formed a pennant flag right here, and I was telling the room, I said, we could pull back to this major support here at 138, and I'm going to pull that up on the daily one minute. Now I got that 138 from this little area right in here. And let me magnify this up right here. We kind of hit that little, we had these had these soldiers right here, this nice little run right here to 138. And that would have been a good spot to exit. But by this time, we've already had share rotation. Well, I say float rotation. And she did pull back a little bit to that 9 EMA here on the daily one minute. And it respected that 9 most of the day. All the way up and then we lost a little respect right down here and I called that support level right at 155 where we had this top before it did pull back there run up there pull back there again run up and then she kind of decelerated and run into that 34 EMA right here after she lost a little respect but at first like I said we did have that little pennant flag form right here and that gave us, and then I called it out in the room. I said, we're getting ready to break in about two or three minutes because we were starting to squeeze with these lower highs and higher lows. And it seemed to me like this pennant flag was bound to go ahead and break out because by this time we've already rotated the share by at least 10 times. And it, I mean, maybe less than that. And I mean, it was just bullish. The volume was just kept coming in. So she went ahead and ran up. And then we had this other little pattern right in here, which I really liked. I called it a strong buy at 155, and it ran all the way up to our target of Miss Vegas and I posted of 194. And I got this 194 from previous highs that we had before. We wanted it to break that 194 and get up above the 2, 207 area. But she hit the 194 and pulled back to that previous resistance line we had here on the ascending triangle. As you can see, we had the lower highs, and it consolidated right in here. Then it had that big breakout. So I showed you three different flag patterns in here, two different flag patterns. And that was the pennant flag, and then the ascending triangle, where we had that breakout. And she consolidated, held pretty strong. I mean, held pretty good. And notice, right into close, it started to pull back, and it pulled back to my red line resistance again, that I was calling in the room at 138. I said, this is a strong support. If it goes below that, it can get down here to this lower level tier down here where we had that ascending triangle pattern where she broke out. Ascending triangle pattern is where you have a flat top on it and you have lower highs. And to me, that's one of the strongest patterns that are out there right now. And then you have what I call the pennant flag is probably my second favorite pattern when it comes to bullish trades. We have that ascending triangle and that pennant flag. And then we had the engulfing candles, three white soldiers. And I bet you if I pull this up to an hour, let me see what this does on the 30 minute. Daily 30 minute. There it is. This is what I was talking about on a daily 30 minute. These are called three white soldiers. And it also had the pattern. And usually when I see three white soldiers, 
I looked for a pullback. After that three white soldiers, that's where we had the uh, pennant flag created. So in my mind, it was still bullish. We had the lower highs, and then once they met, we had that breakout into the spinning top. And then we had this little doji right here. Some almost would call a grave, uh, not a gravestone, but a dragonfly pattern. And then she went ahead and ran on up and consolidated and pulled right back to that support level. And I'm always looking for places of consolidation. And then right into close, we had that big breakout. And let me pull that up on the daily one minute. So the, and when it pulled back to that 138, it ran all the way up to 240. Now, what do I expect out of this trade come Monday? I still expect probably to hear more tragedy with the coronavirus and that's that's kind of the catalyst for the market right now that's why it's been so uh, bearish and I've been calling it a bearish bullish trades probably some of the best times if you're calm and patient to be trading this market I also traded the spy on uh, on Thursday and swung it for Friday which I did very good on it and then I scalped it again, and then I scalped it another time, and the third time I scalped it, I got a little nervous and sold it at an $80 loss, and within minutes, it ran up, and man, I could have made me a couple hundred dollars on that on that option trade per contract. But my mistake, I mean, I waited three different times, and I said, this, this ain't going to do it, and I sold it, and then it wasn't probably two minutes, maybe three minutes after I sold it, it started bouncing up. I knew it. I just let the fear get into me so what I expect out of this trade come Monday let's take a real good look at it again we're gonna call this 138 a very low low support this area right in here is gonna be your second support at 171 and then that first one or maybe this little chamber right in here is, is probably gonna be our first support area between 171 I mean our second support at 171 to 194 and we need for this 217 to hold to bring it up to the next resistance levels. And this sucker can run, you know, pretty good if the momentum still sticks with it. We'll put it up on the five day. Five day doesn't do it for me. So let's go to the 20 day, one hour. We got a resistance level up here that we got to meet. And that's going to be at 157. Now that's going to be a hard resistance. I want you to keep that mind, that 157 right in here. It's going to be a pretty hard resistance. If we can break this catalyst of 157, we'll be able to take it to 306. I'm going to change that to a red line because that's going to mean something to me come Monday. We break that 257, we can bring it up to 306 and 368. Remember, low support, low, 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 138. Second support channel is going to be right in here, and I'm going to draw that in between the 194 and the 171 area. That's going to be my second support channel. And then the first one's going to be right here at 217. Let me pull this up on the daily. At 217 with a resistance to break of 243 and to take it to the resistance up here right around the 256. And if it can go longer, if it, I mean if it can really kick butt and keep the momentum up, remember that that offering is closed we'll be able to take it to 306 and 368 and maybe even up here above a little above four bucks and that's going to be it for this segment of i love stocks always remember subscribe and ring that bell and thank you very much have a nice day and let's have a great week don't let this volatility scare you too much just have a lot of patience Watch the tape and watch the trend. There's a lot of stocks that are oversold. And if we ever get over this, the weather starts to warm up a little bit. I think we're going to have us a real good year this year. I love stocks.